Today I'm taking what I call a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde approach to LS performance. On the Dr. Jekyll side, I've got some mild, no springs required, direct fit cams from Crane Cams. On the Hyde side, I've got heads, cam, and intake. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, let's get going. In this video, we're going to take a look at a full day of dynamics, although we did different things for different people. We started out the day running mild camshafts, crane direct fit camshafts for daily driven 5.3 liters. We've got four different camshafts. One of them I had them grind custom for me and you'll see why it was a bad idea. These are all 500 lift cams that you could run with stock LS3 springs. So let's check those out. After that, we stepped things up. I put in a bigger camshaft, that crane 224 cam, ported 706 heads and ran it both with the factory truck intake and a fast LSXR. Mild, wild, let's check it out. Every day on the dyno is awesome and this day was especially so because I got to do really two different things and cater the LS testing to two different markets. You know, I know we normally put uh, cam swaps in these in the LS motors and they make big power because we put, you know, a fairly good sized cam and it, it makes a ton of power. We picked up, you know, 75, 80, 100 in one test with a 408. We picked up 175 horsepower from a cam swap. So there's certainly the possibility of making big power. But the thing is, not everybody wants a big cam. If you have a daily dr driver like a truck or something, you just want a mild cam, a good upgrade. And a lot of guys don't even want to change springs. So what I did was the first part of this test day uh, involved comparing three or four different mild crane cams. They were the direct fit cams. This was early on in their development. This test was run a while ago, early on in their development. So we ran a bunch of cams and we wanted to show what happens when you have like a 500 lift cam with minor duration changes compared to the factory cam and how much power you can get without hurting any power anywhere basically a lot of guys will be happy the fact that i started these tests at 2000 rpm so all the low rpm guys are going to be happy but to get things started we started out obviously with a 5.3 liter and this thing came from a wrecking yard so it was a used 5.3 and we ran everything stock on the motor the only thing i changed was we put a set of long tube headers on it it had a manual throttle body so this was a pre uh, 2002 or 2002 and earlier motor manual throttle body truck intake we did put uh, larger injectors in it because we were going to run more power later on but the injector really has no effect on power we ran it with the stock heads stock short like everything we never even took the motor apart we just added springs to the factory heads because we knew that we were going to be running bigger cams later on. And besides, with this 500 lift cam, you will need at least an LS3 type spring. 500 lift or 502, which one of these were, or two of these were, you, you're gonna need something maybe a little bit uh, bigger than the factory 5.3 liter spring, unfortunately, because that's right on the edge of available coil bind clearance on the 5.3 liter spring. So you need to take a look at that before you try to run these with that stock spring. But an, a cheap LS3 style spring is an easy upgrade, and you know, those can be had for you know next to nothing. A lot of guys take those out when they're doing spring upgrades, so you can buy them for 30 or 40 bucks or whatever. It's fairly cheap. So we ran our 5.3 liter with the Holly HP management system, dialed the thing in, and ran it as we always do with a Mazir electric water pump and no accessories we had as I said long tube headers and mufflers so run in this manner with the stock cam and the stock LM7 cam is the mildest of all the factory cams so that cam is a 457 466 lift split a 191 190 degree duration split and either a 114 or a 115 degree LSA depending on apparently they made a running change in that one degree in LSA really isn't going to change much on that camshaft it's it's very very mild so run with the stock LM7 cam our 5.3 liter with headers produced 344 horsepower and 378 foot pounds of torque. It was a little low compared to others. Usually the other ones are over 350 horsepower that we've run, but you just never know when you get something from the wrecking yard, this is what they do. So our first cam was the mildest of the three cam of the three crane direct fit cams that we ran. As I said, these were all 500 lift and designed to go in with a kind of a factory LS3 spring. So this camshaft was a 502 lift, both intake and exhaust. 200 degrees of duration, both intake and exhaust, and 113 degree load separation angle. As you can see, a mild cam, it picked up a, a fair fair amount of power. We're talking about a like a nine degree change in exhaust or, or duration. 
This thing jumped the power up to 375 horsepower, so a good 30 horsepower gain. Peak torque was up to 396 foot-pounds, and as you'll notice through most of the curve, even the guys looking down here at 2,000 RPM, this camshaft added power basically everywhere. It was a nice mild cam, picked up good power even in the 3,000 RPM range, and then lots of power as you go out in RPM, although you know, I don't know how many truck guys with this kind of cam would be revving it out to 6,500. We just want to show what happened. So the next camshaft was a slightly bigger, and it was a dual pattern. So this second cam, you can see the gains here, re retain the 502 lift, retain the 200 degree intake duration, same intake lobe, and increase the exhaust duration to 208 degrees and change the lobe separation angle to 115 degrees. And as you can see, power was kind of the same down low, but picked up power out at the top, which is kind of what we would expect of a change of increased exhaust duration. I like the fact that it didn't really affect um, power down low, which was nice. Maybe a little bit of a dip here in the 2600 RPM range, but then basically kind of more power through the rest of the curve. That was a nice combination. I like the added exhaust duration. I think that the motor tends to respond to these, and whenever we do the rec port versus cathedral port cam test, more exhaust duration usually picks up power at the top. This was a good example of that. So the last cam that we tested from Crane was actually bigger it was a 206 214 so it was a good step up from the others and i was surprised that it didn't pick up more power it added a little bit of power out past 5800 rpm didn't seem to lose anything really uh, through most of the curve and down low i was just surprised that a 206 214 cam didn't add power at least out at the top past 5500 or even 5000 but in this test that this is what happened it just didn't change the power really and we were very surprised i want to show you the results of one test i'm going to get rid of number three and I'm going to get rid of number one because <laughs> I was being super tricky and I had the crane guys. I said, hey, I want you to grind me an, an asymmetrical cam where we have <laughs> more uh, intake duration than we have exhaust duration. So I had them flop the number two cam from a 200-208 to a 208-200, <laughs> and they told me, yeah, that's a really dumb idea, Richard, and here's why. As you can see, they were right. <laughs> In the green here is our 208-200. It's a 502 lift, 208 intake duration, and 200 degree exhaust duration on a 115, and it basically just lost power everywhere. It might have picked up a little power at the, at the beginning, um, I didn't load it down at 2000, un unfortunately, but um, you can see it just was not a good choice. It, it lost power everywhere. So these are our cams, and, and when, I, <laughs> when I suggest something to the cam manufacturers and they tell me it's a bad idea, maybe I should go ahead and listen to them. But now let's take a look at what happened with the second part of our test where we step things up dramatically. After spending half of the uh, dyno day, available dyno day, catering to the mild crowd, uh, it was time to step things up and go for the wild end of guys. So what I did was we took our stock 5.3 liter, and obviously we'd run all those cams in it. So we're comparing the basic stock deal with the stock heads cam intake all of that stuff and what I did was I did an upgrade all at once because again dyno time is <laughs> is very valuable and I don't have an endless amount of that so what we did was we upgraded the cylinder heads and camshaft all at one time after running those those mild crane cams. So what we did was stick in a healthy camshaft in it. It's, you know, as people know, if you've watched anything on the channel, <laughs> it's kind of one of my favorites. Um, it's a, a crane 590 lift, 224, 232 degree duration and 114 degree lobe separation angle. It's a good size cam for a 5.3 liter and as we'll see here, it works very well. We also upgraded at the same time, I had a set of ported 706 cylinder heads from the guys at Total Engine Airflow. They were their stage two heads. So full porting, full CNC porting, bigger valves, chamber work, the whole nine yards. Basically, it's a really good set of 706 heads, and they're kind of the functional equivalent like of a maybe a TrickFlow 205 head, and these heads work really well. We've used them a lot on a lot of stuff. So what we did is upgrade the cylinder heads and camshaft on our 5.3 liter, but retain the factory truck intake manifold, and then after that, we will upgrade to a fast intake manifold and show you what the gain is of just the manifold. Unfortunately, I didn't do the heads and cam individually. Again, just did not did not have time to make all of that stuff happen. But here's what happened when we added the ported 706 heads 
and that 224 crane cam. Obviously big power gains, uh, 471 horsepower and 425 foot-pounds of torque. As expected with the bigger cam, most of the gains out past 4,000 and 4,500 RPM range. This thing wanted to rev cleanly out to 7,000 RPM. The total engine airflow heads obviously had a dual spring upgrade on it, and the, those even had titanium retainers. So this thing would not only make lots of power, it also rev out fairly high. But now let's take a look and see what happened. The truck intake obviously works fairly well, and it's a, a good piece. A Trailblazer SS would be a good intermediate between this truck and the, the fast intake. But every time we add the fast intake, it definitely adds power. You just have to decide, is the cost worth that extra power? Here's what happened when we added the fast intake. Power picked up to 484 horsepower. So it picked up about 15 horsepower, lost a little bit down low here, oddly enough. Normally, I don't see that on the fast comparing it to the truck. Usually from about 4,500, the fast is better. This is one of those instances, um, you know, maybe we could have spent a little more tuning, but we just, I don't even see that. But again, this was an odd deal, but this is what happened. <laughs> so this is what I report. Um, and as you can see, it wants to, it doesn't want to fall off like the factory truck does. It wants to continue. It's not going up anymore. Basically, it's kind of leveled off, but it would continue to pull out farther if you wanted to run the motor out farther. So you guys can decide whether or not that extra gain is worth it. Maybe in this instance, given th these differences, I probably would just try a Trailblazer SS. That's fairly inexpensive, although they're, <laughs> that price of those seems to be going up. I can't keep doing tests on those, telling people how great they are, like the dormant stuff. They just want to raise the price on everything. But here's what happened when we went when we went from mild to wild. Basically, we went from 344 horsepower to to 484 horsepower. So big gains from heads, cam, and intake, like we expect from an LS. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about the comparison of our direct fit mild crane cams on our 5.3 liter? How about the heads, cam, and intake on our 5.3 liter? So which one are you? Let me know in the comments. Are you the mild Dr. Jekyll guy? Are you the wild Mr. Hyde guy? Are you, like most of us, a little bit of both? That's why I love this Dino Day so much, because it caters to different people, and that's what this is all about. A big, wilder cam combination isn't better than a mild combination, because different people need different things. And I hope I get that across to you. I love turbocharging a Trabant if I ever get the opportunity to do that. Every bit as much as I like putting it on a 2JZ or a Rotary or a big block Chevy. All of them are good and all of them need to make power. And this channel is about helping you guys find out what makes power. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Hands are going. I'll keep testing.